Okay, today we're doing the second lesson on factoring, and this is factoring lesson two. If you want to follow along in your textbook and see some other examples, but similar examples, you can follow along from page 142 to 146, and then the questions will begin there. Today's learning intentions are going to be, by the end you will be able to understand what a perfect square and a perfect cube are, and also we're going to use the factor trees we used last day in order to determine square roots, cube roots, etc. And by etc. I mean fourth roots, fifth roots, so on. Some questions we're going to look at today are going to involve definitions perfect square and perfect cube. So first of all, a perfect square is a number that can be nicely square rooted. And by nicely, I mean it can become, once it's square rooted, a whole number. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No decimals or fractions. And a whole number, another definition, sorry, a whole number that can be represented as the area of a square. And that's why it's called a square root. If I took a square, the area of a square is length times width. So if the square area might be 25 meters squared, it's a perfect square because the two sides are nice whole numbers. 5 times 5 would give us our area of 25 meters squared. So it's a square root because when the two sides multiplied make a perfect square. Now next we're going to look at a perfect cube. Very similar. A perfect cube can be nicely cube rooted and cube is 3. The symbol for a cube root looks like a square root sign, except above the little indent or the notch, there's a 3, which represents it's a cube root. Now next, another definition is a whole number that can be represented as the volume of a cube. So just like the square root is when we have the area of a square, the cube root, if I find a volume of a cube, if the volume of my cube was 8 meters cubed, now volume of a cube is length times width times height. And this is a perfect cube because we can get nice whole numbers. 2 for length, 2 for width, 2 for height, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and that gives us a cube root. And these would be meters. Um, just in case anyone caught the mistake I made over here, I started with meters squared and then I changed it to centimeters. These should of course be meters. Okay? 5 meters times 5 meters is 25 meters squared. A square, square root. A cube, cube root. Okay. Now in that last section there where we learned how a square root comes from a square and a cube root comes from a cube, some of you may have wondered how a calculator magically finds out square root or cube root. And what we're going to do is today I'm going to show you how to find a square root without a calculator. So what we can do is using last day's work of a factor tree. So example, find the square root of 225. So like I said, we're going to use yesterday's lesson and we're going to use a factor tree. So 225 and in our yesterday's lesson, we're looking to divide by prime, prime numbers. It's not an even number, so it's not divisible by 2. If you remember last day, our check to see if it's divisible by 3 is if you add the numbers up, and that number divides by 3, then this will as well. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so this will divide by 3. And it's 3 times 75. Now 75. 7 plus 5 is 12. 12 divides by 3. So this will divide by 3, and it's 3 times 25. 25 is divisible by 5 and 5. So for this one, our prime factorization is 3 times 3 times 5 times 5. Now to check if something is a perfect square, it's a perfect square if we can make two perfectly even groups here. If I take a 3 and a 5, I have 3 times 5. Then on my other side, I'm going to take a 3 and a 5. 
and you can see now I have two perfectly even groups and there's no extra pieces left over. I've used all of the numbers, 3 times 5, 3 times 5, so it is in fact a perfect square. If a question asked, is 225 a perfect square? It is because I made two even groups. And now to finish up, what is the square root? The square root is simply one of these groups. 3 times 5 is 15, and 15, so 15 times 15 is 225. So the square root of 225 is 15. Now let's look at another example involving cube roots. The method will be the same. If you want to find square root, cube root, or fourth or fifth roots without a calculator, you need to find all of the prime factors. So let's look at 216, and we see it's an even number, so I'm going to divide by 2. 216 is 2 times 108. 108 is again a prime number. It is 2 times 54. 54, sorry, an even number. 54 is an even number. It is 2 times 27. Now, it's no longer even, but 2 plus 7 is 9, so I know it divides by 3. It is 3 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. And to make sure I don't end up off the page like I did in the last example, I'm going to bring this up here. My prime factorization is 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. So I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now, it's a square root if we can make two even-sized groups. So you could try that. I could put a 2 and a 2. But then I'm left with only one 2 by itself, so my groups will not be equal. But if we can make three, sorry, yeah, three even groups, then we will have a perfect cube. So I'm going to take a 2 and a 3, a 2 and a 3, a 2 and a 3, and I have three identical groups. 2 times 3, 2 times 3, 2 times 3. So because I've made three perfectly equal groups, I know 216 is a perfect cube. So if the question asked if it's a perfect cube, I'd be done. However, if it asked to find the cube root, I would now need to find what these groups are. 6 times 6 times 6. So the cube root, the symbol for cube root again, is a square root with a 3 in the notch, equals 6. So here's another example where we're going to apply what we know. Find the side length of the square, so this given square, using prime factorization. So it is a square even if I haven't drawn it perfectly. So prime factorization, we start with 4,900, and now we need to find all of its prime numbers. So 4,900 is divisible by 2. It is, 49, is 2 times 2,450. That is an even number, so it divides by 2. It is 2 times 1,225. Now, this is no longer an even number, so we're done with 2s. Let's look for 3. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 5 is 10. No, it does not divide by 3. But anything that ends in 0 or 5 divides by 5. 12, 25 divided by 5 is 5 times 245. And again, it ends in a 0 or a 5, so it divides by 5. 245 is 5 divide by 49. Now, it no longer divides by 5, so try 7. And 49 is 7 times 7. So our prime factorization is 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 7 times 7. Now, let's see what our square root can be. Try and get two equal groups. I'm going to put a 2 and a 2. I'm going to take a 5 and a 5, and I have a 7 and a 7. So I have two perfectly even groups, so it is in fact a perfect square. And now to find the square root, to find the length of sides, we would square root the square. 2 times 5 times 7 is 70. So the side lengths are 70 
centimeters. Your assignment today that goes along with this in your textbook is page 146 and 147. Questions 4 only do letters A, C, and E, unless you feel you need more practice. Question 5, A, C, and E. And then 6, 7, 8, and 10. Um, number 10, I put a star beside. It's a tricky one. You're going to have to think about this one. If you need a little help, there's a question like it on page 146 in the example 3 in the textbook.